Namaste. Welcome to Mimamsa. My name is Manasa Manjana. Um, good evening. And uh, today I would like to welcome Dr. Sulata Shanoi uh, onto the podcast. Uh, Dr. Shanoi is uh, a psychologist and the director of Turning Hall uh, based in Bangalore, uh, which is a center for psychological assessment, uh, therapies, and counseling. Uh, she's been in the field for 26 years. Uh, she has an MA in NPhil and PhD in psychology from Bangalore University. Uh, and she's been working in the field, as I said, for 26 years. She conducts workshops for parents, children, and teachers too. Uh, first of all, Dr. Shinoy, uh, thank you very much for taking the time to talk to me today. Um, I will now let you uh, say a little bit uh, about yourself, uh, give us a little more idea about what you do. Um, and what um, what we are talking about today, that is uh, behavioral therapy. Thank you. Thanks, Manasa, for having me on your podcast. Uh, I'm sure your uh, topic today is of great relevance to everyone who's going through the present uh, crisis. Because we are looking at, uh, you know, a lot of health parameters. And mental health has been largely uh, on the back foot because of a number of reasons. See, first we have to take care of the physical health, the uh, you know hospitalizations, the ICU beds, all those things needed to be put in place. And secondly, the looming uh, economic uh, crisis, which a lot of uh, people fear. And uh, but I also feel that uh, in the field of mental health, uh, we may be heading towards uh, you know larger numbers if we don't take the right steps now. So in that sense, your uh, podcast is very timely. And thanks for having me. I've been a psychologist uh, and uh, have a number of years of experience. And it's always a pleasure to talk to people, find out their points of view. And uh, so thank you. We can get started. Okay. The question I as you just mentioned, um, we are, people are under uh, extreme duress, I would say, at this time. It's, it's something very new for a lot of people uh, to be told to stay at home, uh, to be uh, confined to a very small space, as is the, as the case in a lot of big cities in India. Um, not being able to go out, not knowing what is happening. Uh, as you said, at first, people have concentrated on uh, these physical uh, manifestations of COVID, uh, having enough beds available, having enough medical supplies available. Uh, but as you also said, the mental health has been neglected. It's been uh, in the background somewhere. Um, can we uh, say that maybe with this, it will come a little more in the forefront? There are uh, slowly talks in the mainstream. I do know that uh, in South Bangalore, for example, the MP has taken the initiative to establish a, a, a helpline where people can call in and talk about how they are feeling. Um, so my first question to you is, um, what is behavioral therapy? That's what we are talking about today, or behavior modification. What is it exactly? Um, and uh, how is it especially relevant uh, today in these times? So yes, Mansa, as you rightly said, there are a lot of people in the field of mental health offering their services. Uh, and I, But I feel that we need to encourage people to come forward because mental health has always been under a stigma. And a lot of efforts by the government, NGOs, private uh, people, they have come together in groups, singly, offering services uh, in this uh, area. And uh, I feel we should take the message forward to the people and tell them that it's okay right now to feel apprehensive, anxious, fearful, somewhat, uh, you know, sad maybe. But these are the normal uh, emotional responses that one would expect. But unless we... Uh, you know, go forward to a more positive state of mind. Uh, we we may succumb to this uh, pandemic uh, mentally as well as physically. So physical aspects, as you mentioned, has been very clearly outlined. Uh, how we need to wash our hands, etc. I think the uh, large the larger question of uh, what can we do, okay, to keep ourselves uh, stable, uh, mentally sane. You know, fully functioning in these troubled times is what I feel. Uh, you know, we need to discuss, and that is where I think behavior therapy can play a major role, and uh, we uh, we can use the behavioral techniques to uh, help uh, ourselves in these times. So first, let's see what's a behavior. Okay, behavior can be 
an action between the individuals, societies, okay, nations, and uh, something that is interpreted. Okay, so supposing you're standing on the balcony and uh, your neighbor passes by and she you know waves her hand very vigorously. Now that's a behavior. So you would, how would you interpret? So it's not merely the behavior that's uh, you know of uh, importance here, but you, our interpretation of it. So you'd say that okay, she's a very friendly lady. Okay, she's a very positive person, and uh, she must be a very nice person because she likes me. Okay, to wave her hand like that. So that is the uh, interpretation of each behavior that we bring into the context. Okay, so it's very important that we understand what the context is what the overall uh, situation is and then try to see what we uh, examine our own behaviors and try to see what we can do to modify them now when you talk of behavior therapy it's a very large umbrella term under which there are number of therapies as you know you may be knowing so there are many offshoots of the original behavior therapy which saw a behavior therapy as a uh, you know standard response to a stimulus so there is a stimulus A and there is a response A and there is a stimulus B and there is a response B. But we know now that it is far too simplistic and we have to bring in the quality of the mind into behavior. Okay. Okay. So the recent trends if you see in the behavior therapy all talk of how we can cognitively interpret the situation. Okay. What is it that we can do to bring in human will? Okay, I think that is what as human beings are uniquely blessed with when compared to animals. Because animals, uh, you know, they uh, function more at the level of uh, instinct or survival and uh, you know, they just uh, attend to the present needs. But as human beings, I think we have higher cognitive processes which can enable us to understand the not only the current needs but also the future needs of individuals and societies. So we can look beyond this for a larger good and for the coming generations as well. So mm -hmm. a lot of things that, you know, when you say of uh, behavior therapy, it's a, it's a model that you can change your behaviors to improve some ways of functioning. So we have to look at the genesis of the behavior, how it's implemented and its impact on yourself and others. Mm -hmm. so more than a very simple you know, antecedent behavior kind of a model that we need to look at. At the same time, it's not so complicated also. It's very easy to understand because all of us do it all the time. I, I think, um, so to sum up what you're saying, it is not just as simple as stimulus and response, but also a little bit of background to it. And I guess uh, what we're also trying to say is that uh, we do it subconsciously. It's not something we do actively um, in the sense that should be done. Yes, correct. So every action of ours, even if I'm nodding my head or I'm picking up a pencil, okay, and I'm scratching my head with it, it's not just the fingertips or the top of the head that is involved, okay? It's a, there is a pre-thought. The thought is more important, as important as the action, but we are not aware of it. That's the only thing, okay? So supposing you're carrying a large box of uh, books and then you happen to drop it on your toe, okay? Mm -hmm. so it's a behavior, okay? So who would you blame then? Would you blame your fingers for dropping or would you blame your toe for giving you pain or would you scream at the box of you know books that you dropped or would you blame yourself like that? So I think if you, if you look, pure behavior therapist, what they say is that look at, simplify the way you look at the behavior. You have taken a box of books, dropped it on your toes and that's it. But as human beings, our uh, you know way is to interpret and to give it a personal twist to it and to see, you know, see it in a slightly different light through the prism of our own experiences and our beliefs. So that might make, okay, I'm stupid, I'm no good, you know, I'm always dropping things, what is this? Or, you know, the world is very unfair or, uh, you know, who put this, uh, you know, so many books in this box. So these kind of things, you know, kind of come up. But if you, uh, what behavior therapy teaches you is that you have you, narrow down the behaviors, try to look on look on them as something that you can modify. So um, if it is very large and very you know unwieldy, we are not able to deal with it. Right? In anything. <laughs> we need to narrow yeah. down, we need to look at the behavior in its 
purest form as far as possible so that you can change it okay um now you just said um that uh, there are everything is a small behavior and uh, we have to look at it in it in its purest form now how can we apply this to the current situation we are in because uh, as you said it is unprecedented a lot of people don't know how to deal with it um yeah. so what i your suggestions or how wh- where do you look at it look at as a start point to say from here we can start and do this yeah so there we, as i told you we can uh, uh, clearly understand the physical aspects of the behaviors okay that is that we need to maintain distance and there is no ambiguity in that okay there is no ambiguity because we all need, we can understand it whether we follow it or not is our personal choice but we can understand it but when it comes to psychological or uh, you know uh, behavioral aspects of uh, the way we respond to this crisis uh, it looks as if it is uh, you know very individualistic whereas it is not i think there are universal you know prince principles which psychology teaches us which will re- you know yield you good dividends if you employ them okay one is i think the first one is to understand how we are responsible okay that is having an internal locus of control so if we feel ourselves as having the ability to do something in our own spheres then we don't feel so anxious we don't feel so out of control and we feel that okay and we can do contribute something and this is a crisis where each one of us is important just imagine if each one of us thought that okay we are not important it's really not necessary let somebody else do it and we just go around you know and we violate all the rules it is going to have a multiplier effect so this crisis very clearly shows that each one of us can contribute and we need to do that now to do that you need to be mentally resilient okay so what do you mean by resilience because these kind of changes and these kind of uh, you know challenges <coughs> Uh, will be upon us time and again so this is not the only challenge we are going to face so unless we bring up our next generation also in the way to face challenges okay to be patient see what what has this crisis taught us we are home bound okay we are uh, we are doing a lot of things which we never thought we'll ever do okay i never thought i'll come on your podcast okay so there are a lot of things that we have it has evolved as you know in a day to day basis Mm-hmm. so uh, we need to be resilient we need to be flexible we need to be adaptable we need to see like whether our actions are ecologically valid that is what i'm doing today okay mm-hmm. is it going to benefit me okay i'm going to have some kind of uh, you know mental and physical good out of that whether i'm exercising whether i'm you know calling up my uh, parents or whether i'm uh, playing with my child or what is it i'm doing and does it have a larger good so these are the some of the universal principles that you know behavior therapy can be brought in in the way that we change our responses to the crisis mm-hmm. so i think it's up to us each one of us has a choice okay that's what psychologists keep telling us that it's not like okay there is a crisis there is you know something uh, very uh, you know terrible happening it could be even in your personal space in your personal life so most of us have gone through a lot of you know ups and downs and crises so how we respond to that i think is the uh, you know question here in this case it's a global crisis so everybody has to uh, you know be more resilient and uh, try to understand the situation their role in it and play our part so it's not that we have to go out and do great things sitting at home being there okay being calm being in control of what we can do and spreading that little bit of positivity whenever and wherever we can i think that will itself have a you know very good uh, multiplier effect i think that's a very nice thought that you put uh, put and that's also a very positive uh, uh, color that you give to the lockdown that all of us are uh, each of us is important because each of us staying at home is making it possible for the uh, pandemic to be limited to smaller numbers and it's not something i had thought of until now uh, So I think this is something new for all of us listening. Uh, that okay, there is a positive to this. That uh, each of one of us counts. What all of us do counts in this larger scheme of things. Um, I would like to go on uh, with this positive uh, mentality or this uh, positive color. 
uh, you said that uh, we can uh, look at it and we can uh, see what are these uh, what are the positives so what would you classify for example you spoke about exercise just now and uh, physical and mental well being um, what are what are these uh, positive behaviors um, how can we uh, first of all identify them uh, and how can we um, if we have not started them how can we start them and more importantly how can we continue uh, to have it because for me the problem is not to start i start very well and then i give up at some point okay yeah that happens to most of us okay so it is a training see none of us and the human mind is such that you know we flit from one activity to to another one thought to another we are not able to continue and then we get a lot of thoughts from the past worries about the present so none of us is you know fully totally functioning as we can be however with training we can get there and the best part about it is that if we follow certain things you know in our own life the discipline the routine and uh, you know the positive attitude we will certainly make uh, gradual changes till we are able to somewhat you know function uh, in a better uh, frame of mind so last what positive behavior negative behavior so if you look at actual behavior therapy they say there is no such thing as a positive behavior or a negative behavior a behavior just is okay so you have to decide whether that behavior is going to be functional for you okay whether it's going to be helpful for you and to others and therefore you adopt it so even if you are dealing with a child instead of saying yeah, you know that classifying that behavior as good or bad like say the child in the classroom running around is labeled bad right all of us wouldn't approve of it and the same thing a child running around in the field is labeled as good because that's what he is expected to do so <laughs> good and bad are relative terms but the human mind likes this you know binary that okay good and evil good and bad positive negative you know we like we, because that is the way the mind can deal with certain things so if you are really going into the pure like behavioral therapy uh, you know uh, paradigms and models you just look on this take a particular behavior okay say if you are panicking or if you are anxious or if you are sad or you are depressed rather than say this is a negative behavior or you know we should or even happiness as a positive behavior you just see okay this is the way i am is it helping me okay is it helping the present crisis is it helping my family get through the day in this present crisis okay is there something else that i can do to change so my take would be that you know instead of looking at any behavior in the light of positive or negative why don't we look on it as a situation okay there is a situation mm-hmm. at hand and really this uh, you know coronavirus uh, microorganism which is uh, you know given the image of a devil or an evil thing it's really like you know playing on our psyche also yeah. okay just a microorganism it's doing its evolutionary duty of multiplying and that's what it's trying to do the only thing is we are getting as a human race are getting affected by it and so we want to you know so we say we want to conquer it and we want to kill it and then we want to you know subjugate it and these are the kind kind of things we talk about so that it gives us a kind of you know mastery over it but it's just part of nature it's a it's evolved over time it's it's something new and we have not come across it and that's why we're grappling with it so if you look at our personalities the way it develops also i think there's so many differences between people right you would agree like even growing up in the same house four of us will grow up as four different personalities so it's not yeah. just something it's so there is a genetic component there is an environmental component there are friends there are you know your school you went to your society or uh, you know relationships all this make you the kind of person you are so what they say i mean what is generally believed okay you can debate on it is that the more positive experiences you had you become a more positive person right i mean that's it's a, it's a very simple logic if you take it like and the more negative pers- negative experiences you have you become kind of a negative person so you can explain this in the light of say you know deprived childhoods or uh, uh, you know people who have not uh, from the under privilege and uh, who have had a lot of uh, difficulties growing up and so naturally you know you would say that okay they would be um you know dysfunctional or they would be prone to depression or they would be you know prone to anxiety etc 
and conversely you would think or you would assume that those who had positive experiences would grow up to be more positive personalities but really that's not the case as we all know okay there are many celebrities who are you know uh, given to depression and anxiety and uh, you know even uh, committing suicide at the peak of their careers so there is nothing really that we can say that you know the um, any one particular factor is important for uh, your positive or neg negative attitude but mm -hmm. one thing i'd like to say is that you can always at any point of time okay bring in your uh, determination your commitment your human will okay mm -hmm. to change your destiny if you take the onus on yourself that okay and there are innumerable examples personal examples okay there are um, examples from history examples from uh, uh, you know all around us which show that people from even the most depraved environments have somehow risen you know to their uh, uh, full uh, potential and those who have had everything you know silver spoon in the mouth they have kind of succumbed to misery and uh, you know disease or disorders and things like that so this positive negative you know is is a slightly uh, uh, debatable kind of concept so we need to see okay this is this is at, uh, where am i at this point and that's the beauty about behavior therapy is that it doesn't take you like you know psychodynamic th th therapies and theories way back into your past okay into your childhood into uh, you know the your first day of life or before birth that things like that. it examines you as you are right now okay? so that's the beauty of behavior therapy mm -hmm. it says how you are right now these are your behaviors okay how do you think these behaviors are helping you are they helpful to you or they are not helpful to you what is it that you can do about it what are the changes that you can make and of course you need to examine the earlier uh, you know factors also because you need to come to terms with maybe some kind of abuse or deprivation or other things are that is also an ongoing process i'm not uh, you know undermining their importance but i'm just highlighting that it, it is very important for us to understand our own uh, you know um, ability and our capability which we seem to forget in times of a crisis that yes we have the resilience we need to tap the resources and sometimes we need to ask for help also there's nothing wrong okay so that is a little bit if you permit me a small story i can you know yes, so there was one yeah <laughs> okay yes. so i love this story it's uh, you know uh, a thief was brought to the uh, you know for uh, he was to the magistrate and uh, so the magistrate said that you know what is it uh, why why did you take up uh, thieving and you know you have done so much of wrong and you harm so many people so he said no it's not my fault my father is a thief my uncle is a thief okay i have been brought up in a family of thieves okay that is the only profession we know so really if you want to blame me or give uh, you know sentence you uh, blame my parents you know blame my parents uh, what uh, you know don't uh, put the onus on me okay so then the judge and the jury and all okay this seems to be a uh, you know uh, maybe it's it's right maybe what he said because he didn't have a chance he grew up like that okay so they were debating about it then he said that he asked the police officer who brought him in so he said okay so what about you young man you know you seem to be from a very good background and uh, you know you seem to have done your duty and you're very upright and honest and you showed bravery and all that then he said yeah but uh, we are from the same family okay so i when i grew up i saw the how much my mother suffered i saw her cry in the nights i saw how we were ostracized as a family in our neighborhood i saw how uh, we had nobody to play with because they would call us thieves and you know kind of uh, uh, isolate us and that may be determined that i need to you know do something to change the status quo i need something I, when i grow up i'm going to change the order of things okay and that's how and somehow it happened to be my own brother i caught okay so this story like very nicely teaches us that it's not so much your genetic or so much your environment or so much your childhood experiences it is your you know your um, understanding of the situation and your proactiveness in doing something about changing it and that i think is very important especially in today's uh, uh, you know crisis i think that's a very good uh, example for all of us to remember that uh, 
we can actively change the situation based on how we think and uh, how we perceive things. Um, and like you just said right now, it's not so much about a positive or a negative behavior, but it's the entire situation at large and how we interpret it, so to say. Um, now, if you go along those lines, um, I will ask um, and also a question that has just come. Karan has yeah. asked, um, despite the fact that there are no positive and negative behaviors, are there still any kind of small steps we can adopt or uh, which, which can help us uh, look at this situation in a more, more positive light? Or yeah. is this a completely individual thing? No, as I said, there are certain universal uh, principles you can apply. And I'm sure like people who are watching the show, they can take what applies to them. Okay, It's not that uh, each one has to go out there and find out his or her own methods of coping. So really, we're looking at coping strategies. So first, the first step I would say is how are you coping in the present situation? Okay, what are the methods that you are using? Because I found some of my clients, you know, they don't want to shave, they don't want to have a bath, you know, in this crisis. And uh, they sleep uh, during the day or they, the routines are completely out of control. Okay, and then they binge eat or they binge, uh, you know, on movies or uh, take to alcohol to pass the time. And uh, that's... Uh, you, You've also seen that there's a sudden spurt in domestic, uh, you know, and conflicts and uh, a sudden uh, surge in the data usage and people are more on the phones now ever before. So several hours have gone with parents, I mean, with children and uh, adults, uh, you know, watching TV or uh, your uh, social media. So you need to see, okay, what is it that you are doing in this present situation? And really, there's no need to change your complete lifestyle. Okay, so what I would suggest is that you take this as a, as any other day. Okay, get up at the normal time, do your normal things. Okay, freshen up and then uh, have a structure, have a, a goal for the day. Okay, try, try to find out. Okay, what is it I can get through for today? Okay, let me not worry too much about next month. Okay, but uh, today I have a roof over my head. We are far more, you know. Uh, a better situation than many others uh, out there and what is the best I can do and I've known a lot of people who are doing that and also looking at uh, you know doing things which will uh, help such as okay if I need a new set of skills maybe this is the time I should go online and see whether I can uh, you know study that or if I need to do something else or need to volunteer let me do that and uh, so you are you are more involved and you are more proactive and you do, do things in your own individual uh, way to cope with the situation. Okay, so looking at coping strategies, I think this is uh, some of the things that we need to do. Okay, um, you just said to treat this as a normal day. So to uh, get up at the same time and to do everything you would otherwise do, take a bath, like you said. Um, now, I think for a lot of people who have to continue to work from home, IT uh, people or anyone else who has the opportunity to work from home, I think this is to a certain extent still possible. Uh, or even students, for example, who are maybe preparing for exams, they still have a schedule. Um, right. what, how, how can people who at this moment, uh, for example, don't have anything to do at home? Uh, because you just mentioned that uh, binge watching or binge eating. Uh, turning to other coping mechanisms. How can they um, use this all of a sudden so much amount of time is available to them? Um, what can they do? How can they uh, introduce a structure in what would have been a structure less than so to say? Yeah, so first maybe you need to look at what are the ways you are dealing with and you look at the timetable. Okay, can we have a timetable? Okay, just for the day. And can we set a routine? Okay, and we can we also be flexible within that routine? It's not that we have to be, you know, because having children at home or having, uh, you know, aged parents or uh, other family members at home or having to do household chores all, uh, you know, alone. These kind of things will put a strain. So don't be too hard on yourself. But also understand that the human mind looks for uh, a kind of a structure. Whether you are a child or whether you are an adult, we all need certain boundaries. We all need certain kind of do's and don'ts to follow. Okay, it's, it's just the way the human mind works. We are not so evolved that we can, you know, do things entirely up to the uh, in the uh, in the situation that we are in. 
we need some kind of a comforting uh, you know limitations or uh, boundaries that we set okay how do i get through this you know, few days or how do i get through this week okay what do i need to maybe you know how do i stock up for this week so that's why then you avoid all that you know panic and uh, uh, the holding of uh, you know essential items and everybody rushing out and buying things and panicking and that's a usual mentality that uh, you know you see so avoid all that try to stay calm if if you are in the practice of exercise daily okay yoga meditation all these things can really help you remain calm and in control okay and also remember that see having like too much time on your hands also doesn't mean that you have you can waste it in whatever way you want okay maybe you can use that time for something else okay and sometimes being too much together as a family also can get on everybody's nerves okay so earlier you would have a husband who would leave from any housewives okay earlier you had a husband who would leave the house to office and then come back at a time and then you knew your routine was pretty much fixed okay so now the husband is at home and the children are at home and you have a lot of chores to do and there's endless demands okay hour to hour basis so that's where you have to start to you know set boundaries you have to inform everybody okay these are the new things that we need to follow get everybody on board as a team okay don't try to be a super person a super woman or you know try to do everything yourself and uh, you know so allow and also this doesn't mean that we should not have any fun okay that's another thing that we forget okay because if you study like what is you know the neuroimmunology today it very clearly shows that if you have a positive attitude you remain cheerful you remain calm okay or at least you are not as agitated and depressed and all that there are certain uh, hormones that are released which increase your immunity okay it's so called interleukin and similarly if, if you are stressed okay if you are anxious and if you are agitated okay there is a release of cortisol which is a hormone that is that actually makes you more susceptible to diseases disorders and things like that so we find that you know so if you can so there is a very clear way ahead for us now whether we adopt it is what we need to and how we adopt it in our own individual ways we need to take stock of okay so in this case i think we need to take both care of both our physical health and as well as our mental health okay then only we will come out of this as survivors the i think the biggest takeaway for me from what you just said is uh, to take take it as one day at a time and not as a whole chunk because then it's so much more uh, so much more living uh, uh, yeah. things like oh my god i have uh, two more weeks two more weeks how can i deal with this uh, it's so much easier to look at it okay i have to do and to yeah. do i will do these things or uh, what something like that it, it makes it so much more easier and uh, one question uh, this is also something we just briefly uh, spoke about uh, is uh, from karishma uh, how to occupy children when work parents are working from home but also ensuring that they are not spending too much time on uh, technology yeah. and that sort of thing this is also something i spoke to uh, swati about in the work from home uh, mm. in the scenario that both parents are working and they have children at home Uh, how can you uh, keep the children occupied? Uh, do you have any suggestions, any ideas for such parents? Yeah, so it's up to us. Like, how do we make the best use of the resources that we have? Okay, so if you are in a place, okay, like a city, and you are well connected to uh, the internet, or uh, you know, you have some kind of uh, resources uh, on hand which you can explore to keep your children occupied. Okay, and also uh, there. new innumerable instances you know we keep getting videos of uh, children playing at home you know books being uh, stacked up and they're made to as hurdles and they you know they made to run jump and things like that because children have this very strong need for physical movement so confining them at home naturally makes them irritable and also i'd like to you know tell parents that you need to inform your children in a way that they can developmentally understand okay what is going on because they themselves may be uh, they can you know uh, be irritated or anxious and this can show up as uh, you know anger or aggression and then you wonder what's happening to your child 
so it's important just as how we need to understand see as adults we have a time frame okay maybe there's two weeks more or there is a month more and then you know things are but children don't have that kind of time frame in mind so how if we don't tell them anything at all and suddenly we are at home and suddenly we you know our own anxieties and our own tensions show on the children they are bound to react and they are going to you know respond in totally different ways so think of occupying your children uh, in ways in uh, you know probably it is also a good time for uh, you know laying some kind of boundaries about what children should do okay younger children i can i can understand that okay they you know they you need to be physically around them all the time but i find nowadays that children expect everything you know uh, given to them done for them even the older children they are totally unable to figure out what you know they need to do on their own so they always had a either an overly tight structure or an you know very lax and loose structure so they could do exactly whatever they wanted so maybe this is a time to set those things right okay and certainly like whatever it is how much ever they may cry cry scream shout i strongly feel that you should not allow them too much of screen time okay not only is it bad for them physically but also uh you know we know a lot of uh, we have a lot of knowledge that it's not good so we have to engage them as far as possible but i can sympathize with parents that you know there's not an easy time and uh, even if you have to give them more you know tv uh, tv or gadget time than you normally would okay don't feel so guilty don't feel don't beat yourself up over it because this is the we are kind of helpless okay but make sure that once things are going back to get back to normal you will reduce it okay let it not become addictive and you have to set your own uh, you know examples we can't have always a like, constant standard that children i mean parents are doing a lot of things which we tell our children not to do and then uh, you know so naturally they ask us but of course children have different standards and parents have different standards but i feel there is a balance that you need to work out so this is not the time for them like if you think that they enjoy maths activities you know involve them in okay let's measure the room or let's see what's the volume of this or you know help me in the measuring the you know ingredients for a recipe or let's do something creative sit together read okay now these families don't read so read together play some board games you know bring out that carrom set that was lying you know getting dust in the corner and so many things you you can really do okay if you can uh, you know be creative about it so i think the main thing is for us to understand and accept our limitations yes we are going through difficult times it's not going to be easy and uh, children are going to be demanding they're going to be irritated bored restless etc 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 but that doesn't mean you need to personalize it or take it as your own inadequacy okay yes. so friends Uh, yes that's i think that's very true um the example you just gave uh, to indulge their interest like measuring the room i think i also saw something on uh, on the internet the other day where this parent who had to work he came up with a list for the child to do uh, it was the child's to do list to find something yellow to find ah. something round and something because it's a small child so this yeah. idea that you had that you just gave this example i think it's very uh, very very good and it's something that uh, people who work from home also can uh, utilize uh, so that they can work at the same time the children are also not too bored mm-hmm. and now i would like to move on uh, dr shanoy i had this uh, question about how we can set up an environment which is more con- conducive to positive mental health but i think that you already addressed in the sense where you said uh, establishing a routine and sticking to it and making sure that it is not too different taking days uh, one at a time rather than at a, as a chunk So I yeah. think you already addressed that. Um, okay, you know, I have one have question. Uh, we we spoke about how uh, a behavior is positive or negative in the way we interpret it. So I think in this sense, introspection is an important thing. Uh, do you have any technique in which one can look at uh, a behavior and tell is this good for me? Is this good for my family? Hmm. But remain objective uh, and not get too cynical because I think this is something uh, a lot of people are guilty of. 
when they look at something, they start to get uh, they get into this whole um, whole thread, and uh, it, it becomes too much. Um, so, do you have any kind of small technique that people can use uh, in the sense that they look at one behavior and they analyze it as objectively as possible without uh, being too harsh on themselves, as you said? Yeah. So, I think uh, first to address what is positive mental health. Okay, people think that positive mental health is being happy all the time. Okay, so that is a misconception we need to clear right now. Mm -hmm. Positive mental health means that you are having some kind of emotional, uh, you know, uh, accessibility, some kind of emotional resilience, okay, to face challenges, to face crisis, and you are functioning in the best possible ways your environment permits you. Okay, so that is what the goal of positivity or the positive mental health uh, actually should be. But mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we take it in the happy, sad, you know, happy is good and sad is bad. And these are all emotions. No? These are all emotions we go through. And these are all fleeting and these are all bound to occur. So, when we are finding ourselves like not functioning as much as we can, I think that is what we need to, you know, when that is when we need to bring in certain ways of a change. Okay. So that change should be brought in and one of the main ways you can do it as you said is introspection. Okay, so what is introspection? I would just say that it is a calming of the mind. Okay, it's not that you need to study some exotic uh, you know, meditation techniques or uh, you know, have some mantras or have a uh, you know, lot of uh, uh, external uh, things to help you to understand what you are going through or you know, very complex models. It's nothing like that. Uh, if you can do it right now for all of us, yeah, okay, so just sit back in your chairs, okay, just sit back, okay, and just close your eyes, okay, and just see what is the mental chatter that is going on in your mind, okay, are you able to be silent or silence this continuous dialogue, okay, that's constantly there in our minds. If you can do it for about a minute, two minutes, okay, three minutes, stay with the calmness. Okay, that's a great exercise if you can do it. Okay, but most of the time what happens? So what would happen when you close your eyes? What happens about everything you have to do <laughs> you haven't done right, yeah, because they tune the mind to that high you know hyper level of functioning where we think that even sitting down and you know having uh, you know nothing to do is a waste of time so if you're doing something it has to you have to race against things you, know, you have to do things at a uh, very fast mode and you have to multi you uh, you know pride yourself in multitasking and you can do three four things at a time and speak on you know two different phones at the same time and your mind is constantly abuzz i think that's why you know, this generation they're not able to you know they're not able to sleep they're not able to uh, you know have any kind of quiet time and i find a lot of people are young people are very disturbed now okay but if you ask the older people they're quite okay of course, of course loneliness is one of the things uh, you know older people face but I think they are quite able to take this slow, uh, you know, pace in their stride. So if you are, if you take this as a routine practice, okay, and it has nothing to do with any god or religion or, you know, any ritual or anything like that. It's just a slowing down. As maybe this crisis itself, as somebody said, it's like a pause button. So we need to see, okay, have I been like running in the rat race, you know, literally uh, going nowhere, you know, just running, running, running and exhausting myself and not knowing you know what uh, where am i going and what am i doing so maybe this is a time you have a re-look at all that okay so there's plenty of time now nobody can say they don't have time even if you're working from home i'm sure your commuting time has cut down and your uh, you know other uh, you know things might have uh, decreased okay for most of us that's the case like we are uh, you know having a lot of time on hands so you introspect and then you go inward okay so a lot of our spiritual gurus also that's what they said use this time to go inwards okay so, so now you're at home instead of 
cursing yourself for sticking, staying at home, or oh, I'm stuck, or using a dialogue that says, okay, I'm stuck between the four walls, and you know, I feel so restless, and things like that. Sometimes you need to change the way that you, uh, you know, look on things, or the way you talk, even the words you use. Okay, sometimes I'm stuck at home, or, uh, you know, this is the most boring period of my life, or this is the most, you know, horrible things can that, that has happened. So we go in this negative loop and that is what I think causes the mind a lot of unrest. So calming the mind is an excellent technique. Okay, all of us can learn it. There's nobody you can see. But then it takes some training. Okay, and then the other thing is slowing down the mental chatter. Okay, did you experience that mental chatter when you close your eyes? Yes, I mean, it's all of us, it's there in our mind, it's nothing, you know, unusual. We all have that, uh, you know, content, continuous dialogue. But if you are able to slow it, if you are able to, you know, pace it, and if you are able to sometimes distance yourself from that, okay, there is something that's going on in my mind, there's something that says, okay, this is, you know, how, how do I do this, how do I do that, you just have to tell yourself this mental chapter is not me, okay, I do the, have an observer, nature okay i'm observing it from outside okay so you're distancing yourself from what is actually happening so it's not like you're withdrawing it's not like you're uh, you know running away from what's actually happening many people think if i stop worrying that means i'm you know i'm not understanding the gravity of the situation and i'm simply running away from the problem it's not that you're understanding the gravity or understanding that you know this is a very serious uh, period we're all going through but when I identify with those, you know, negative thoughts, then there is no room for positivity in my mind. Mm -hmm. So, introspection is very important. And as we are all, you know, um, um, I mean, we are not only cerebral, we also have social needs, we have mental needs, we have physical needs. We have to take care of that first. Okay, so as a psychologist, I feel... You know, for me to talk about how well you eat, okay, eating sensibly, okay, and uh, exercising and sleeping. These three things I feel are the pillar of, you know, your existence of, uh, you know, good mental health. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, they, it is not, uh, you know, ironic for a psychologist to stress on the physical health and the physical aspects because it's only when you have those in place that you are, you'll be able to attain some kind of you know mental peace or balance and uh, positivity and go ahead in life so it, it's kind of like a foundation that you have to have the required amount of sleep you should eat enough and you have to exercise enough and when you have that foundation you can build on it and then focus on mental health as well it makes it easier so to say yeah and you have to look at the simple things like for example hydrate yourself throughout the day okay so I would find that uh, you know I was not drinking enough water throughout the day, and then sometimes I'd land up with a headache. And then that actually was because I had not had you know my meals on time, or I didn't eat on time, or I believed that I had to do too many things, and there's no time for you know the simple things like eating and sitting down and having a meal and you know relaxing or sleeping on time and things. So unnecessarily try to remove the, I mean uh, try to remove the clutter from your life. Okay, yeah. just you cannot function if your you know table is full of things. The life also this I think is an excellent time for all of us to simplify our lives because we have found out what are our priorities. Okay, what is the basic things we need? We are really living very basic lives. Correct. We don't need much in this present situation. We are all mm -hmm. quite well if you can look at it like that. And nothing has happened to us because we have not visited the malls or not gone for movies. We are all functioning very well, isn't it? So if you can remove the unnecessary things and once life gets back to normal, I think which is not going to be the old normal, it is going to be the completely, uh, if you can embrace a complete change okay, in your own lifestyle and uh, in society, you will find that your lives can go on in a much better way than it has previously done. So maybe this crisis sometimes... History has taught us that, you know, always uh, following a crisis, there is a possibility of change. So, this is an evolutionary shift. That's what many people are saying. That, you know, this crisis is maybe, you know, trusting people forward in a way that they never believed is possible. So, we have to make that change work for us. 
it's not always that you know we are going to we are going to a you know a worst kind of uh, situation or uh, things are going to get bad why don't we think that like every crisis if you look at you know man made disasters or uh, natural disasters there are many nations and many societies and many individuals who have come out stronger so i think it's our choice finally what we do at this time and how after this we uh, you know take on our uh, you know day to day activities and continue to live our lives will determine whether we are going to be you know coming out of this as a you know survivor successful or not i think i have to hold on to that word you just used the uh, dr shnaida this choice it's a choice for all of us it's how we look at it how we do uh, things um now holding on to that i want to talk about uh, expectations now um there is again social media i'm going to hold on to this is something that uh, that has been doing the round saying that take the time to learn something new uh, learn a new language do a new course um now this is something you said when it came to parents to be realistic to be to not be harsh on yourself how can people uh, be realistic um, about setting these goals yes it is a new normal yes you people have more time um so how can they utilize it but at the same time stay realistic so that they are not too hard on themselves okay so i think well uh, what i understand from your question is that how do you face the present situation um, how how do we um, like there is a pressure to do more than normal to learn uh, a new course or to learn something new uh, this is not possible for everybody because some people have to work some people have parents children that they have to take care of um, so how do you manage this expectation how do you look at your situation and tell okay this is the most i can and i'm doing it and this is good how how can people do that okay and again you said you know adjusting to a new reality it's a, it's a reality okay but uh, i'd like to tell that your reality is quite different from my own reality okay so the situation is the same it's out there okay but all of us carry the map of the what you call the reality in our own minds and that is colored by our prejudices our experiences our beliefs okay what we know so what i understand from this crisis is going to be very different from you or anybody else will understand from this crisis okay so there's no like a one reality size fits all okay and sometimes it's a reality that we make okay it's in all as the buddha said you know the mind is everything what you believe you become mm -hmm. and if you think that okay this is the way that you know this is my reality then you will take steps to you know make it work for you mm -hmm. okay so if that who is this person who is putting so much expectations on you okay yes, there yes. are a lot of people who are you don't have to compare with anybody else i think that's also one thing that is you know constantly there in uh, you know nowadays a lot of it is happening is that you're looking at somebody else okay looking at somebody else's lifestyle and saying okay he's having this he's going there and then you're believing all those uh, lovely pictures on instagram and you know facebook and uh, things like that and all those beautiful things and places is gone to and uh, because nobody is going to put out their miserable uh, you know experiences they are only going to put out their for their uh, you know they want to show off where they have gone or what they have bought or the exotic uh, dinner they have had and then you judge yourself with by that standard okay and you find yourself wanting so i feel mm -hmm. that reality itself is something that you need to see like okay is it uh, i mean it's very difficult to assess like is it the reality out there or is it the reality in my mind but since our mind is the only thing that you know we have to interpret that reality we have to depend on our own reality okay and make it work for you so if you are inclined to do a lot of online courses at this point of time do it okay if you are inclined to do a lot of reading do it okay if you are inclined to just chill out spend time with your children do it because you will not get this kind of time again with your families okay but the bottom line is that you have to do things which are 
you know, going to be again the positive, okay, the so-called positive, then going to make it work for you, okay, it's in the larger good and it's in your, your welfare. I would not say like interest as in, uh, you know, that you will get a promotion from it or you'll get something else from it, but you enjoy it, it, it maybe relaxes you and you learn something for it. So some of us who are more like learning driven, okay, for them this online courses taking it will work for you. Some of us, for me, I enjoy cleaning the house. Okay, so maybe this is the time I get to clean the house. I, I don't want to, you know, uh, read. No, I don't want to do. But then do something that you feel is enjoyable. And I, it's, of course, you. It's, it's in the larger good also. Having a clean house is there. But then if you're not inclined to clean your house or not, you can ignore the cobwebs on top and, you know, you can ignore the dust on your table and all that. Please do. Okay, do something else. But whatever you do, whatever you take up, it should satisfy you to some extent and, and it should also be what I would always say the benchmark is ecological validity. That is around you, the people around you, the environment around you also stands to benefit. Okay, so don't sure. like, okay, you can do it, you do it. If you can't do it, then don't do it. Do something else. What, what you just said about um, you, you will not get this time back. I think that is something uh, that everybody has to look at. That even if you're just sitting down with your family and just talking to them and spending time with them, this is something you would not have had at, at any other time if this had not happened. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. So that, that's again a positive spin, and it's a, you know, it's not a bad thing. It is something good. You, you will have these memories on you. And that is also a good takeaway to have, I think. Yeah. Um, That's right. And now, Dr. Shana, we are slowly approaching the one hour mark. And if we yeah. have time, I have one question. And this is uh, this is coming from a viewer. It's uh, been asked by Karan. Uh, you, uh, how can you deal with a friend or a family member who is going through a mental health challenge? Uh, how can you make them uh, realize that they need to seek help? Yeah, okay, so I'm sure all of us have uh, certain people in our, you know, own circles and looking at them, you feel sorry for them that they're suffering. See, basically, it's not that they have a mental health issue or they are undergoing some kind of, you know, psychiatric or psychological disorder, but it, it touches you that they are, you know, not functioning to their full capacity, they are suffering, they are in need of help. Okay, so as a friend or as a family member, you can reach out to them. See, many, I tell you, many, 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 uh, you know, patients feel that, uh, feel isolated, they feel alone, they feel nobody understands their problem. So, more than a mental health professional, if within their own circle, maybe the spouse or maybe the, you know, sibling or maybe a friend or maybe a colleague reaches out and says that, you know, because you're, you'll be at the same wavelength, okay, you know, understand each other's uh, you know, lifestyle. So you can reach out and say, hey, you know, uh, you look a little, you know, off color these days. Would you like to share? Okay, is there something you'd like to tell me? And don't force yourself on uh, others. Okay, it may appear mm -hmm. to you that, okay, this person really needs help. Okay, he's not fully functional. So, but if he is not in a position, he or she is not in a position to take your help, then we cannot force somebody to you know, look at things from only your point of view. The only thing you can offer, even for your own child, like say grown-up child, I'm, I'm saying, okay, or for a spouse, you can say that, okay, it looks to me, it appears to me that, you know, you uh, are uh, upset about something or you have, you seem to be very preoccupied, you're not your usual self, okay, you seem to be having a lot of things on your mind, is everything okay? Can I do something for you? Okay. Would you like to share? And uh, they say, no, you just have to leave it at that. And then you have to say, see, I'm there for you. Okay. These are the small, that sentence itself can make a world of difference. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's there for you. Anytime, please reach out. Okay. And then you can also suggest that, okay, there are mental health professionals who can help you. Okay, so there's no need for any of us. So the thing when you start saying a lot of you statements, you need to go and see a psychiatrist. Okay, you need the mental health per person. So what happens? A person immediately there is a block. You want to, you know, stop that because you don't want to accept it. First of all, you are in denial. 
you are in frustration you are in some kind of emotional upheaval on top of that somebody is giving you advice that okay you, you know then you say what am i nuts you know why should i do it so you can say that okay some of us uh, you know all of us rather all of us have these emotional upheavals time and again and if you feel that you know it's coming in the way of your uh, you know functioning uh, as a person or in the office or as thing kindly seek help okay i i i feel that you know if you need help there are enough agencies please seek help okay or can i assist you in that mm -hmm. okay and then you have to leave them the, the only thing is if they are like you know uh, very dysfunctional okay like some people are suicidal or some people are very aggressive okay mm -hmm. or you have to you have to evaluate the extremeness of the situation and as such such a situation you have to take your own call like how do you uh, you know maybe get this person to take help maybe a, a spouse or you know somebody else uh, can uh, uh, you know help you out okay? and you have to render the help in that way but you you can also put it in a way that okay this person will accept it and you say if not now maybe at a later time you might want to consider help okay that is i'm only talking about the milder kind of uh, issues that one sees like anxiety <laughs> you know burst into tears who seem very preoccupied who seem but you never know what's going on inside a person's mind yeah okay you you have to sometimes evaluate and this happened to me as a professional also but sometimes i'm not known you know and then i regret later that i didn't know that this person had these thoughts in his or her mind and we could have helped much earlier yes so it's a good thing to to try to offer help it's a good thing to you know see that your channel of communication is open and uh, if it is very dysfunctional then you have to you know see that the person gets immediate help okay i think that that will definitely help karan uh, with his question um i have one last question uh, dr kumar before we move on uh, to summarize the last session um now we spoke about uh, managing uh, with, uh, with with the situation we spoke about the routine and structure um you also spoke about how uh, do what you what what makes you feel better uh and uh, what helps in the grand scheme of things and uh, now one uh, question i have and this is also for me a personal question um then how how do you uh, how do you differentiate when you see there is there is laziness which is of course always there um and then there is also burnout and depression uh, how can one differentiate between the two because how do you see what you're doing when you're not doing anything how do you tell if this is just you're being lazy <laughs> or how do you recognize that there is there may be a problem here there may be something more to it than just being lazy yeah so these are the things that all of us you know have so some days you don't feel like getting up so you delay by an hour okay or some days realize when you're working okay today is sunday so let me not cook or let me get up at uh, you know 11 o'clock or let me sleep uh, late or let me skip a bath today or you know not brush my teeth today i think these are all the things that we do okay which we don't like to talk about but uh, these are the things that we as human beings do because the human mind is such that you know it's not like fully controlled by the situation and it, it you know it kind of slips up and uh, these uh, episodes will occur in your life and even the feeling of say sadness you may be going through momentary like you know low mood or some kind of apprehension not really amounting to a panic attack but then you will be apprehensive or some days you cannot sleep right and some days you feel like eating more some days you feel like eating less so there is no such thing as us like us you know uh, proper unless you are you know uh, like very military kind of uh, oriented and you have to have exactly the same amount of you know food each day and uh, how you get up and uh, you know uh, spend your day so most of us will have that so it's okay to accept it so when do you know that you may need help okay that is one thing is that if it is very frequent okay so if you think and that is again it's an individual thing so if you are say i have known people from the creative field okay so they work for 
days on end you know they work like maniacs they you know night and day they are involved in some play or some you know um, show and things like that and then they come home and then they are totally uh, you know completely uh, not able to do anything else so this <laughs> kind of it depends on your lifestyle also but for most of us we need to see that whether this is very frequent okay so frequency is one of the things and uh, secondly the severity okay so frequency severity if it's very severe okay if you are feeling very low very very mm-hmm. low okay and you are feeling like almost like what's the point of living okay i have nothing else to look forward to then that is severe okay but if you are just saying okay, i feel low i don't feel like getting up i don't feel like doing things so let me lay around for some time that's okay and the third is i think how is it interfering in your uh, work and your relationships so these three things i think you have to take care of okay one is if it's too frequent it's a red flag okay if it is very severe very acute sudden panic attack otherwise you are very normal but then it's it's very acute okay it's, it's like mm-hmm. you are frozen in panic then mm-hmm. that's a red flag and the third is it's interfering in your uh, work uh, and your lifestyle and your relationships so your marital bond is getting strained you are behaving you know very differently with the children and you are uh, snapping at your colleagues and you are unable to focus on your work so then so you have to see the uh, all these three things to find out whether it's just a passing mood or i can ignore it or do i need some help for it and not really necessary that everybody has to go for to a psychiatrist or a psychologist first you have to evaluate you have to most of us will not even if i tell you you need uh, to go to a you know mental health professional most of you will not so probably you need to get your own support systems in place okay before that so you can tell your sibling or you tell your friend you know i'm going through this for some time help me out let's go for and most of us do that right let's mm-hmm. go we and we will choose a comedy so that you feel a little better after that okay or let's go out for dinner or let's have something so if that works it's fine that doesn't mean that you know you need uh, any kind of additional uh, help apart from that and it might work also okay the only thing is you have to avoid negative coping strategies many of them take to you know alcohol or drugs or you know mm-hmm. social withdrawal or extreme behaviors or a rage episodes and all these things are dysfunctional coping behaviors so mm-hmm. we all have our coping strategies make sure that they are uh, you know positive and functional and in spite of that if it continues then i would certainly suggest that you see a mental health professional because they are there to assist you and just like how you would go to a doctor for you know your when you have a fever or you're not well or you want to consult about a tummy ache which you, i'm sure even then you'll try your own home remedies correct and then when his uh, stomach ache is not the same then only you call your doctor go to so similarly if you are having any kind of mental strain stress anxieties okay it's, it's it's okay to visit a psychologist or a counselor or a psychiatrist take the help and then you may get better and then you can taper off the sessions and then carry on with life as normal thank you thank you very much for shedding some light on that and i think that is also a question which a lot of people would have at, at the moment since a lot more time is available uh, to see if they are lapsing into laziness or if there is a little more behind it and um, now i think i have exhausted all my questions and i don't think we have not addressed any of the questions in the comments uh, so i would like to end the session now but before i let you go dr shunoy i have uh, i would like you to give us a uh, top five tips or suggestions um that you see would help people uh, as you said uh, in, in a positive mental health in, in the sense that uh, you are still functional and you can still do everything that you want to do and that you have to do okay so uh, yeah it's a tough task you have given me the top five is always very difficult and it's just from you know my perspective okay one more thing about laziness is that i think you have to uh, also look at uh, physical uh, activity as one of the you know main ways to get over your mental laziness okay mm-hmm. mental laziness try to you know have an active lifestyle and again the you know the usual uh, advice about uh, eating well sleeping well you know you will be uh, you know in a fairly good frame of mind now coming to the top uh, five tips i think one is 
the the uh, remember that crisis like this because it is unprecedented and global we are all shaken up okay but crisis is and change is part of life for many okay so the thing is we have to learn to live and what uh, you know epidemiologists and all are saying is that be prepared for something else like this okay so we have to be constantly vigilant about it's not about anxiety it's just being aware just being prepared okay no so maybe you have to look at you know be building up your own resilience resilience flexibility adaptability i think these all three things go together because even if you look at the way things have happened over the past 10 years 5 years and 1 year okay the jobs have changed enormously our lifestyles have changed our ways of interacting with people so the change has been like thrust on us at super speed levels okay so we really need to be more adaptable others will be like you know frogs in the well we will not be able to look at the new reality so uh, building up your resilience and uh, staying positive in these times i think what your podcast is being very positive okay that's very important because uh, that will give you the do the courage to uh, go forward and avoid negative people okay a lot of people with doomsday predictions telling you you know things are going to get worse and you know frightening you and things like that so avoid whether it's your friends or whether it's your family or whether it's from social media okay a lot of rounds of you know a lot of things that are happening and people get so agitated that how could they do this how could they do that you know leading to kind of as and them mentality and how could this particular group or this particular you know uh, race or whatever it is it's a kind of the, it's a very easy to get drawn into those kind of negative influences okay and third is i think you can restructure this is the, as you said it's a very good time to introspect to do some kind of course corrections in your own life okay what are the dreams you had what are the things that you thought you could achieve so if you have done that great for you and you can go on in the same way in slightly different modified way or maybe you need to look at uh, you know more different ways of functioning and being and uh, always like think of the good things that are going to happen okay change is going to be there part of your life there is always going to be a follow there will always be something good and something you may find unpleasant and not say bad maybe unpleasant or you would not you know care for it so look on the positive things always and i think one of the other things is that you have to embrace the reality okay go with the flow okay and think that okay this too will pass nothing lasts in life okay whether it's youth or beauty or money or relationship all will go through their own turmoil okay so this too will pass so just be with that thought stay positive okay and um, I wish you all a very very bright and pleasant future okay in spite of whatever is happening so thank, thank you. you so much mansa for having me thank okay, you very much dr shina i think all your tips everything that you said i think it's first of all very relatable for everybody and more than that i think it's also uh, very helpful for all of us i think all of us can use a lot of what you said especially introspection uh, what you just had us to close our eyes for a minute and try to like slow down our thoughts um for me it's been very enlightening to learn so many different things also this very basic thing what you said a positive mental health uh, is not just about being happy all the time about being functional happiness and sadness are emotions that come and go depending on the situation exactly so, uh, thank you so much for your time and uh, for all your uh, for all your thoughts and uh, for all the tips that you've given us um i hope we can speak to you again soon um sure, thank sure. you again for taking thank the so time much. thank you everybody who tuned in live asked us questions and uh, commented as well uh, i hope you are all staying safe staying at home uh, and just like dr shanoi said i wish all of you a very uh, pleasant evening and uh, a very pleasant uh, next two weeks i think we still have to go uh, yeah. until the lockdown okay. happens uh, so stay safe uh, and the uh, we'll see each other i think very soon again thank you bye bye